Let's talk money. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's Amin here with Sierra Masters coming at you from my car again. Uh, this is a good setup. I want to talk about money this week. It's very, very important. Why is it important? As a Muslim who's trying to get their mindset right, you got to think of money as a, a, a certain blessing that Allah has given you and therefore you need to use it correctly. Allah gave you energy, Allah gave you time, Allah gave you certain comforts like we talked about two weeks ago. How are you going to use these resources that Allah has given you uh, so that on Yawm Al Qiyamah when you're asked about these blessings you have a good answer. Okay, so first I want to talk about a system that uh, I learned about a few months ago and I implemented which is uh, it's in found in the book called uh, I think it's called secrets of the millionaire mind. Okay, it's a bit of a cheesy title, but the contents is good specifically um, a system called I think it's called like the six jar system and this is that your income coming in you divide into six different jars first jar which might be 50% of your income. Uh, would be necessities, okay? This is bills, rent, uh, payments on your car, uh, anything like that. Uh, phone bills, this kind of stuff. Stuff that is a necessity. The second, uh, that's around 50%. The second thing is uh, 10%. The rest are all 10%, okay? So one jar is 50%. All the other five are 10% each, okay, of your income. So the other one is education. So 10% aside, just purely for education. Another 10% is your uh, uh, long-term savings. So this might be that you're putting 10% in there until you've built up enough money to last you six months worth of living expenses, okay? So you're adding there until you reach that six month mark, perhaps. The next is charity, 10% give to charity, uh, which is a nice amount, really. We should always push ourselves when it comes to giving charity. And when it's a percentage of your income, it's like pushes you far. It's not like, um, yeah, I'll see how much I feel like giving. No, there's a number there. Um, the other 10% is uh, what's called a, a, free, a financial freedom fund, which is like money you're building up to invest in something which will eventually, inshallah, like make you financially free, okay? And finally, the last 10% is fun. In order to get a taste of that life that you could be living, uh, if you had more money or you had your finances in a better state, you to put 10% of money aside to kind of enjoy your money. Uh, and so you're not in this constant state of, or oh, when I make that much money, I'm going to enjoy life. No, you're enjoying it a little bit now. And that kind of uh, makes you more patient to put aside money in those other places, give to charity and all that, because you are having a certain amount of enjoyment. So this is how I set up my uh, kind of planning um, and mostly I've stuck to those percentages but you might have a different situation. I know a lot of people that 50% of their income is not enough for their necessities. So you might want to change it and you might want to make it uh, 555 for the others. So 75% it goes to necessities and 25% goes to 5% each for the other categories, okay? Um, so, you know, but I would definitely emphasize those categories. They're good categories to have. Um, so a few more notes on the different categories. So necessities, the good thing about necessities is it would include stuff that you're going to have to pay in a lump sum, like in a year's time, for example. So, for example, uh, you've got to pay for your car insurance. Let's say you pay your car insurance once in a year, not every month, you pay it yearly. Or, for example, you know, I live in the UAE, so I've got to pay for my visa every three years, okay? There's no monthly payment, it's just a lump sum every three years. So, you would, uh, in your budget, every month you're putting money aside full those things. So, okay, I need to pay uh, 2,000 uh, pounds at the end of this year, so in 12 months. So the, how much do I need to put aside every month to go towards that? So when that lump sum payment does come, you're not surprised because you've been putting money aside every month for that. Another example is every, let's say, two, three, four years, you need to buy a new laptop or you need to buy a new phone. So put a little bit of money aside so that when your phone breaks in two, three, four years, um, you've got that money there ready and it doesn't stress you out. There's, you don't have ex uh, any surprises anymore. You've got the fund, you put a phone fund in your necessities uh, part of your budget and then at the end of three years, for example, you've got a nice amount of money, you could go and buy a phone with no stress. So 
that's something for the necessities part of it it's not just your monthly necessities like bills and stuff it's also stuff like uh, you know uh, payments that are lump sums every year or every six months or every three years that you're putting money aside for it's also stuff like uh, in a, a holiday let's say you want to take one holiday a year in your fun in the fun section of your fund you put money aside every month saving up for that holiday if you want to go for Umrah same thing I might I might for Umrah I might put that in the charity section um, and I might put money aside or you could put it in the necessity depending how you know you view things and how you want to organize yourself so that's really cool in terms of necessities and those uh, lump sum payments that you might have and those horrible surprises of extra payments you might end up with um, another little pointer is the charity side of things so if you're putting 10% of your income aside for charity every single month something interesting happens instead of saying oh I don't have money for charity or oh, you you kind of have a grudge like you're spending like let's say you give a hundred pounds to charity hundred dollars to charity you're like oh that money could have gone X or it could have gone to Y or whatever instead of that mentality now you've got the mentality of I've put 10% of my income aside now I need to go and seek places to give that charity now you turn into I'm already decided I'm giving that much away now okay where can I give it who can I give this to and it becomes a much different mindset okay um, when it comes to fun, you know, stuff like fun, I, I actually include any hobbies, any sports, anything like that. Um, and then education, it might be buying one book a month, a few books a month. It might be what I've done is I put money aside to buy different courses. I might want to attend a workshop or an online course. Some of these are quite expensive, so it's good to build that up. And then when you find the, the right thing that you're looking for to advance in your personal life, in your finances, in your job or whatever, you've got that money there to go ahead and do that. Um, Long-term savings is, is basic, I've already explained it. And then financial freedom, you know, this might be something that eventually you buy real estate with that money that you've built up, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's important to get our finances right because after all, it's a, it's a blessing that Allah has given us and we will be asked about it. And so if you could be very stringent and you actually plan it, just how you might plan your time and you use it wisely, you plan your finances. Uh, it's not something dirty like you know some you know some of the philosophy of the Christians or even like communists they see th money is a bad thing no in Islam we see if it's if hmm. yeah my my phone overheated because as you can see it's very hot out here and uh, it overheated stop recording so uh, what I was saying is that we uh, see money as if we're getting it and it's being used in a good way in a halal way and in a good way then it's good and if we're using it in a bad way or we're not using it in a, in a beneficial way or a justifiable way then it becomes a bad thing so for us money is neutral right um, however it is a very powerful tool in doing good and so for me at least it's like a bit bias it's not neutral right in the middle it's actually m more a good thing than a bad thing for sure um, and we just have to w look at how we're spending it and that's why I mentioned having a plan and distributing it based on these percentages every single month the final thing I want to share with you is I actually do all this planning uh, I used to do it in like a spreadsheet but uh, I found a software that does it and there are many softwares that do it uh, the one I use is called uh, YNAB uh, y -N -A -B, you need a budget and so that's a software that I use to plan this it's made it quite easy for me but there are many out there some of them are free so uh, I would actually recommend you go to that level of once a month putting your spending in there and if you're like in the US or a lot of countries in Europe it will actually pull all your spending uh, into your uh, into that software from your bank account there's a connection made there and, and it will do it automatically me myself I have to do it manually so every time I spend money I put it into my phone but it's quite quick um, and uh, also that's why I would recommend you try to just only spend with your card with your bank card your debit card only spend with that and don't spend any cash uh, as much as you can because then it's all trackable and at the end of the month you could say oh this went there this went there this went over budget and budget is a whole other story which I haven't included in this I've kind of discussed it with the proportions uh, but I can inshallah discuss it in a further uh, video inshallah so this has been about money how you spend it how you you know invest it uh, always remember spending money there's huge benefits to it you will be asked about it and Allah when he talks about 
the people that strive for his sake, the mujahideen. He says, uh, those that the 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 uh, yujahiduna bi bi uh, amwalihim wa anfusim. Allah mentions their money. They do it with their money and then with their body, with their selves, right? Physically. So Allah is putting these two things in the same level, if you like. If not, money being higher, uh, and you have to look at the tafsir for the for the specifics of that. So. You know, it's something to consider, definitely. So, yeah, uh, this has been video, finances, get your money right. You will be asked about it. And uh, drop your comments below how you distribute your money. How do you, when you get that income, how do you kind of budget it out? Do you budget it out? Uh, do you think it's stupid to budget it out? Anything like that? Let me know. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.